Hello and welcome to the World Athletics Podcast. I'm John Mulkeen and I cannot believe my luck today because I have gatecrashed one of the most exclusive clubs in the world. I'm talking about the Decathlon's 9,000 Point Club, of which there are just three members and they are all here with me today. We have Kevin Mayer, the current world record holder in the Decathlon. Kevin, hello. Hello. And we have Roman Chevrolet, the first man to break 9,000 points in the Decathlon and the 2004 Olympic champion. Roman, hello. Hello. And we have Ashton Eaton, two-time Olympic champion and two-time world record breaker. Ashton, hi. Hey, guys. Welcome, guys, to the uh, to the podcast. Great to all have you here for the Decathlon special. How are you all doing? Kevin, have you... Uh, have you recovered yet from the European indoors? Yeah, I've been starting to train again, so uh, so I look forward to do the Olympic. Uh, that was just a, a, a small step. The big thing is the Olympic, so I get on the track uh, one week la- later. I don't know how much you've you've seen of one another over the past few years, um, but I believe the last time you were all together on the track in a competition, and probably I think the only time as well was at the London 2012 Olympics. Um, and actually, it was a big milestone, wasn't it, in in all of your careers, but for different reasons. Roman, it was your fourth and final Olympics. Um, turned out to be the last competition of your career. Kevin, it was your first global champs. Um, your age just 20 at the time. Very much a, an up-and-coming star of the sport. And, uh, and Ashton, you were the champion. You were the winner that that occasion. Um, and in fact, the whole of that year was, was a kind of dream season for you, wasn't it? Because it started with the World Indoors where you won gold with the world indoor record, then set the the, the uh, decathlon world record at the US trials, and then captured the Olympic gold in London. So at the end of that year, was did you have like a real kind of, um, you know, kind of pinch me moment? Did it take a while to process all that you'd achieved in that in that year? It did. Um, I was, I was just, I don't know. I mean, I was 20, what, four at the time? And I really had no clue uh, what I was in, in for what I was doing, frankly. And I think just, you know, two years earlier in 2010, I was kind of uh, coming on the scene. And then in 2011, I was at Daegu and just like trying to do my best, ended up getting silver to Trey Hardy. And I, th- I mean, I was trying to be reasonable and I thought, hey, if I just keep up, you know, my development, uh, one of these days, maybe I could break a world record or, um, you know, I'll try to go for the Olympics and do well. And that it all happened in that year just blew my mind. It was like way sooner than I thought was possible. Yeah, and Roman, I guess that competition in London was quite bittersweet for you because although it was obviously great to make it to a fourth Olympics at the age of 37, I believe, um, you were unable to finish because of injury. So how how frustrating was it to to kind of end on that note for you? Uh, It was uh, very frustrating because... uh... I know that it was uh, my last uh, Olympic Games and especially in London uh, there are beautiful people which have they are really really good fans and uh, for me it was the the best Olympic Games uh, um, what what I what I know because uh, the people uh, was always full house and and and, and uh, make a fun for everybody and I was frustrated that uh, that I have to finish after the first event and I can't uh, finish the whole decathlon and uh, say hello to Olympic Games. Yeah. And did you watch the rest of the decathlon or was it was it too difficult to watch? Yeah, of course, of course. I watch <laughs> it. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Um, Kevin, back at London 2012, your career was just taken off. You'd won, I think, World Under 18, World Under 20, European Under 20, but that was your first year as a senior. So what do you remember of, of that first Olympic experience in London? Yeah, that, uh, that, was, that was too much for the for, uh, first experience uh, on senior. Uh, I went there, I was the only French. I didn't have a good uh, English. I was lost. And uh, at the beginning, it went... Uh, the, the, the 100 wasn't good. I uh, almost... Uh, uh, hit the line at the longer three times, so it was horrible. But that was the first experience, and, and I think that was a, the start of something that I I build. That to, I just this, this couldn't be any more stressful than the Olympics. So the other events in uh, in the next years were 
we are good because of that experience, I think. Do, do you recall if you spoke to Roman or Ashton or, or Ashton and Roman, did, did you two talk much during that competition? Kevin, how old, how old was you there? Uh, I, I was 20 and uh, no, I, di I didn't talk, I didn't talk any word to, to Ashton or, or Roman because uh, they, they were, they, they were my, my, my star at, at this epoch and I didn't want, I didn't have a good English, so I didn't try to talk to them. I was in, in my, in, on, on the shadow and I'd watch them with big eyes and uh, I just, I, I was just trying to, to make my best, but uh, I was more spectator than actor. <laughs> I think um, in 2011, Roman and I had done um, an indoor competition in Tallinn. And I think that was probably our first competition. And I remember um, Roman coming up to me and he said, I've seen, I, I, I think he said, I've been part of one world record, my world record, outdoor. And now I want to be <laughs> part of another one indoor. So you break it. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. And you did. Yeah. <laughs> and we did. And then what was, what was really, really great for me um, as a young, you know, 23 year olds, uh, we went out in Estonia later and we were just, you know, dancing, having a good time and to, to see, uh, you know, Roman at the time, who was a hero to me, um, be just actual person also. It was like very, very um, cool. And it, it was like helpful for me to, to also, I think, go forward and, and kind of carry that um, just like human part. That was great. I yeah, it was a good time. Um, Roman, you were the first member of the 9,000 point club with your your world record in Gutsis back in 2001. Um, now, I think in that competition, you broke your PB by about 250, 270 points. Was it one of those dream competitions where just everything falls into place? No, it, no, it wasn't. Uh, I expect that... Uh, a few events I expect that uh, it will be it goes uh, better. Uh, for example, um, uh, the shot put, uh, the the hurdles, the uh, pole vault, and uh, after after that competition, I think that I will do nine thousand point every next competitions, and it doesn't work. <laughs> um, Ashton, you twice broke the decathlon world record also had a few indoor world records um did, did you ever experience like any kind of feeling close to you know perfection as far as you know combined events goes or you know having this kind of feeling where just everything goes right or, or were your experiences a bit like romans in that you know one or two events went wrong but generally most were, were correct never never experienced perfection and um for me personally, and I think what I hear from some other decathletes is that is um, that is the draw, like that is the motivation to um, any. I, I think I think you just know like you're not going to get it, uh, but you try anyway. And even in the world records that I did, it was like there was always something. Um, and I don't maybe you know it's just like a personality thing. Like you always want more. Um, or you always believe that you have more and you want to just try to express that and show that. And even a small little, you know, mess up in an event, whether it's a throw or a jump or something, you think, dang it, I left, I left something there. Um, and so that was always the motivation, even, even when the scores were good, but it doesn't mean that they didn't feel great. It was just like, I think it really felt good for me. I've always just wanted to try to better myself. And even if it was by, one point, like a decathlon was a way to do that. And when it happened by one point in the overall score, I was like, cool, I'm still like progressing. And that, that felt good. Kevin, I think we're all familiar with the story of your world record, bouncing back from the disappointment of the European champs in 2018 to then break the world record just a month or so later. So it must have been such a huge relief to get that performance out and you know express yourself 100% with what you knew you were capable of doing. Mm. I, I'm not saying it, it was a rel relief because uh, I'm not doing sports to, to make results. I do it to, for pleasure. I love to, to practice in the 10 events. And uh, I was really frustrated to, to, to stop after the long jump uh, in Berlin. So uh, knowing that I had a new decathlon in one month on France and knowing my shape, it was... Uh, 
a big, big, big uh, satisfaction, and I just wanted to express myself. I didn't so I didn't think about the world record at that moment. Uh, the media always talking about it uh, before the comp- competition, but I just wanted to express myself and do a, a, a full decathlon. And uh, yeah, for me, I think that was a perfect week. I, I'm not saying that uh, I can't uh, beat it again because I know now I'm better than the moment I break the world record. But at, the mom- at this moment, uh, I can't think about something greater than what I, what I did because every e- event was a surprise. Uh, even in high jump, when I had my, my pain in my knee, uh, I, di- I did a 205, so that was the perfect week. At, at what point during that competition did you start to realize that that you were on course for a, a world record? I was thinking about it because all the media talked to to me about that during 15 days before. So I had it in mind, but uh, all the athletes will told to will told you that uh, when you have pole vault, you can't say you are going to beat the world record because you you never you ne- you never saved before that. So uh, I was uh, at the pole vault, and when I when I passed five thirty five, I told myself that's it, I can't beat it. But before I was not confident at all. <laughs> <laughs>